Welcome back everyone. I hope you're ready for some more shotgun slug action because today's video is going to be all about slugs on one particular shotgun that, well, I don't really care for that much, honestly. And every time I talk about this shotgun, I have to bring up the fact that at launch, it was my favorite shotgun. And it's cool, it's got two shots, then a pump, and it's pretty unique. I'm talking about the R90, obviously, and over time, I just kind of grew distant from it. And even though Dragon's Breath is pretty strong and pretty fun to use, the buckshot version is just kind of meh. I mean, it's just okay. Now in Warzone, the gun is solid, especially with Dragon's Breath, but slugs, how do they fare? Now you'd think with two shots and then a pump, it'd be solid overall and you can do some serious damage. So let's go ahead and delve into slugs on this gun for Warzone and see if there really is anything that makes using slugs on this gun a good choice. First off, let's go ahead and check out the damage and the ranges. As always, keep in mind these damages are hand tested, so the values may not be exact and on the nose, but they should be pretty close and give you a good general idea of the damage that can be done. Looking at these damages, you might notice they look somewhat familiar, don't they? And well, like in multiplayer, slugs for the R90 and the Model 680 have the same damage models and numbers, but the only real differences is the ranges. And this is the same for the VLK Rogue as well, from what I can remember. So the only thing that is exactly the same, from what I can tell, is that maximum damage range. It hits about 2.6 meters for the R90, which is the same as the Model 680. Once we hit the next damage ranges, it starts to differ from the 680 in that the ranges don't extend as far as the 680 does. And really, they shouldn't, because the 680 needs to be one of the higher range shotguns in my opinion since it's just a solid pump action. But you can get one shot headshots on fully armored players up to 2.6 meters, and past that in most ranges, it'll take about two. Chest shots will take up to two, up to about 32 meters, which is pretty good, and past that it's going to take about three chest shots, then it's going to take four stomach shots at least at that same range. Most of the time using this gun, in most ranges you should be using it, it's probably going to take two to four shots to kill. Now, you may look at these damage values and think, wow, it's like the 680, but with slightly less range and the same damage really, plus you get two quick shots, what's not to like? Well, there's a few reasons why this isn't all gravy, and first of all, yes, there are two shots to use, but you have to pace them. I mean, 100%, you do not want to spam these two shots unless you are at like five meters away from an enemy or something. The reason for this is the recoil. Shooting them quickly right after another will give you a good amount of kick and you will likely fly over the enemy's head with your shots. This happened to me quite a bit when I was using this and it was really frustrating. Now, recoil reducing attachments do help to some degree, but even with max recoil control, it was still kind of crazy and honestly, it's not the most ideal way to run the gun by just stacking a bunch of recoil reducing attachments everywhere only. And this gun does kick a lot and it kicks up and to the right, so just keep that in mind. So the right way to use this is to pace your shots and deliberately aim for the upper chest and the head. If you do this and stay in that 20 meter range, it can work, but as we know, slugs are also quite inaccurate. And in the case of the R90 compared to the 680, slugs drift further from center than they do on the 680 from what I can tell. This picture shows the spreads, and as usual, the choke is the best attachment for reducing that random spread that slugs have. The tax sentry barrel helped a little bit, but not that much, and of course the smaller barrel made it slightly slightly worse. One thing to keep in mind with all the slug shotguns is that slugs have a slower travel time. What this means for you is that you're going to have to lead your targets quite a bit, especially past 30 meters or so, and past that you're going to have to aim slightly higher than your target as well. So couple this with a weak damage at range, it makes this gun really a terrible sniper, so I do not recommend sniping with this one at all. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the attachments that help or hinder the damage ranges. As you can see, none of these attachments really help range much at all. The biggest increase was from the choke and the tax sentry barrel, and that was only 12%. That's not really that good at all. And this just kind of furthers the gap between the 680 and R90 as well, because the 680 could get around maybe 38% more range with the right attachments. The thing about the R90 is that it's just truly an average type of gun, and with attachments, they just don't really do that much for it. The range you get from the get-go is kind of what you get no matter what you put on it. The nice thing about that though is that you don't have to worry too much about what range attachments you have to use. You don't really even need the tax sentry barrel because not only is the range not that great, but the degree of spread that it has still doesn't really help that much either. So if you want to know the best attachment to use in terms of the barrels or the muzzles, try the choke or maybe even the suppressor. I don't often recommend the suppressor, the monolithic, but since it's a bit more spammy than the 680, I think having a suppressor can be useful in some cases, so your presence in-game isn't as obvious, I guess. 
It does get a nasty aim down sights penalty compared to the choke, but the choke or suppressor are both okay to use here, I would say. One other issue I have with the R90 is that the iron sights are kind of bad and obtrusive, so you may need to run a reflex sight on it just to be able to see better, and when you're actually shooting with that recoil, sometimes it can really mess up your shots. Just something I thought I'd mention, so keep that in mind when picking your class setup. And speaking of class setups, let's go ahead and take a look at my recommended class for slugs on this gun. You want to use the choke, the tack laser, the stipple grip tape, slugs, and an optic of your choice. So you can use the 5mW laser instead of the tack laser if you want, but your aim down sights time will be a bit slower of course, and the stippled grip tape is used so that you can get a small sprint out boost as well as a small aim down sights boost as well. Now, the beauty of this gun, or maybe even the bad thing about it, is that like I said, attachments just don't help that much on how the gun performs, so you can try out lots of different setups, but they all kind of feel the same and don't really make that much of a difference, so this is just kind of a general outline or skeleton of a class setup for you guys to use. Now, for my thoughts on this gun with slugs, I gotta tell you, it's not pretty. Out of all the slug shotguns I have used, this has probably been my least favorite in Warzone. The 680 has the range. The 725 is a monster with one-shot headshots. The Origin 12 and Jack 12 have good spam ability, but this one is just kind of the weird stepchild of the bunch. It just doesn't really excel in anything, and it's just awkward to handle well. Everything about this gun for me personally, and yes, this is a bit more subjective part of the video, is just weird. The handling feels awkward, the sights are bad, the two shot with a pump in between is kind of strange to get the hang of, and I don't know, I just never really enjoy using this gun unless I have Dragon's Breath on. Slugs on this gun are just meh. They can work, but you are just so, so, so much better with pretty much any other setup for this gun. I actually had a very difficult time trying to get decent gameplays with this thing because of all the things I mentioned above. Will I ever use slugs again on this thing? Probably not, but I do recommend that you guys at least try it for yourselves, and who knows, maybe you guys can do a better job using it than I can because I did not enjoy it and I am not coming back for seconds. That being said, I know a lot of people have requested me to try this gun and use it, and some people seem to swear by it. I don't know how, maybe I'm just really bad. You know, some guns you just don't really vibe with at all. That's kind of how I feel with the R90 and pretty much every game I play unless it has Dragon's Breath on. And that is just about gonna do it for this video, guys. It's not as long as my other videos, but there's just not really anything special about this gun that I needed to share. It's just kind of bland overall, and I don't really enjoy using it. But what do you guys think of this gun? Do you think slugs are good on it? Do you think I'm insane for hating the R90 so much? Well, if you like shotgun content for Call of Duty or just in general, or even weapon guides for other weapons, be sure to subscribe and come back and visit for more shotgun goodness. And with all that being said and out of the way, I want to wish you all a happy day slash night, and I will see you in the next video.